Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are back on the path to the Chapayev. This time we're at tier 6 which means we are in the shores. Let's start out with the commander. First we have Nikolai Kuznetsov as our commander. We have Nikolai Von Essen and Philip Vyant as our inspirations. We are running Beyond Range, Igniter, Punch Through, Fixated, and Fully Packed as our skills. For the ship itself, we're running Aiming Systems Mod 1, Steering Gears Mod 2, Steering Gears Mod 3, and we are fully upgraded. We're not running a flag at the moment. Um, of course, we can go ahead and throw that on there real quick. Alpha Tester flag. We do have a Regia Marina camo on there, which is just a 4.5% buff to detectability and dispersion. We are not running any boosters. Um, the radar does go up to 9 kilometers now, which is nice at tier 6. Stats. For survivability, we have 32,200 hit points. Still no torpedo protection, which is a huge liability in these ships. Artillery, you have 152 millimeter 57 caliber Mark V U's that you have 12 of, reaching out 17.6 kilometers, reloading in just 8 seconds, and have a 180 degree turn time of 25 seconds, which is not good. Uh, HE shell maximum damage is 2300 with a 15% chance to set fires. AP shell maximum damage is 3672. For secondaries, you get 100 millimeter 56 caliber B-54s. You get eight of those, reaching out to 4.7 kilometers and reloading in 3.8 seconds, firing HE with a maximum damage of 1,400 and a 9% chance to set fires. For torpedoes, you get 533 millimeters, but instead of quintuples, you get quad launchers. Um, but they, you have one on either side of the ship, so you have eight torpedoes total. Uh, reload time is 101 seconds. Maximum damage is 15,100. Uh, torpedo detectability is 1.4 kilometers, which is pretty average. Uh, torpedo range is awful at 4 kilometers. And torpedo speed is 70 knots, so pretty quick. Uh, AA defense, you have 12.7 millimeter Dushkums. Uh, two Bs. You get eight of those doing 20 damage per second, reaching out to just 1.2 kilometers, so basically useless. And then 37 millimeter 46 Ks, you get 24 of those doing 73 damage per second, reaching out to 3.5 kilometers. And then you have the 100 millimeter 56 caliber B-54s uh, that you have eight of, dual purpose secondaries, firing 40 damage per second and firing out to five kilometers. For maneuverability, 35 and a half knot top speed with a turning circle that is absolutely atrocious at 900 meters. Our rudder shift is just 4.2 seconds, however, with our uh, build. But again, it's it's one of those weird things about the Russian cruisers that is just it's awful. Like you can dodge relatively well, especially at range, but when you need to make full turns, they just stop turning. They'll start to turn really quickly, and they'll finish a turn really quickly. But somewhere in the middle, they just get lost. Not sure what happens. It's just weird. But that is the Russian cruisers. Concealment. Detectability, because we're not running a concealment mod, is an atrocious 12.9 kilometers for a cruiser. 8.1 by air. 2 is always guaranteed. 6.9 kilometer smoke firing penalty. Armor, we don't really have any. You have a 16 millimeter bow. Uh, so you're not you're not stopping anything really pretty much everything's gonna go through that and Then of course you have the exposed Citadel, which is absolutely massive and stay sticks out way above the waterline So uh, yeah, you, you don't want to be getting hit broadside in this thing by anything uh, Battleships will tend to overpin if you're flat broadside just because it's a very narrow ship however if you're angled even a little bit, those shells will arm and you're likely to be death struck if you're angled. So be careful. Overview, sure shot. Shells with a good ballistic trajectory maintain velocity, making aiming easier. Pyromania, above average chance for HE shells to cause a fire. And compromising, higher caliber AP shells may overpin the armor but may still arm depending on shell velocity. Shores, the ship was designed as a light squadron escorting cruiser Project 28. She boasted a high speed and powerful artillery, but was an inferior to foreign counterparts of her time in armor protection. She was designed in 1937, never built. 
Now, you'll notice that this looks very familiar. I mean, it basically looks like its predecessors. It, it is a modern looking cruiser, but again, very narrow beam. Like, very, very narrow beam. Means it gets through the water relatively well, but does not like to turn at all, uh, as we've already discussed. Now, you also notice that the catapult launcher is in the middle of the ship. This is a terrible, especially for a late, uh, a late war vessel like this. This was designed, in what, what does it say, 1937? Like, these catapults almost always had been moved to the rear of most ships by this point. Uh, and that is solely due to the fact that if, if you get hit, if there's a plane on your deck, or you got fuel there, obviously, for the planes as well, um, like, you don't want to fire it midship. It's why they move them to the back of the ship. So if you have a crash or if you have, um, you know, uh, a plane gets hit or, you know, fuel goes and gets hit for, for the, the aviation fuel, it tends to be really, really flammable. You don't want that at the center of the ship where everything else is. Like, you, you just don't want that. So that's why later ships tend to put all of the catapults or even helipads at the back of the ship where there's nothing else around it. So that if you do have a fire, it's easier to contain, and even if it does burn, it's not really hurting anything. So, with that being said, let's take a look at this thing. It's a it's a good-looking ship. I still say that these are very good-looking cruisers. I really do like them. Um, even if they're not my play style. And with that being said, let's get to the gameplay. Alrighty, so we're going to be on Sea of Fortune. Now, this game, I'm just going to be 100% with you, is not going to be about damage, but it is going to showcase how these ships can be used in a way that they're not normally used. Um, and you'll see what I mean as we get started. Now, I start this game just like you would any other time in a Russian cruiser. You start at range, you try to burn things down. These things have ridiculous fire chance. 15% uh, on paper doesn't sound very, like, appealing, right? You're like, oh, 15% chance of fire. I mean, it's, it's like one fire every five shots. Um, but no, 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 no. That ain't how this works. This is World of Warships. And uh, HE in this game doesn't care what your fire chance is. It's like 100% chance to set fire, unless, of course, you're shooting it out of a battleship, which has like a 50% chance to set fire because... You know, 50% chance of setting fires is a lot less than 15% chance to set fires. Math. I know. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to push off to the left side, try to help this side win, and then we're going to wrap around and, uh, you know, just carry this team. And you'll see what I mean by carry this team. Again, this is not about damage. It's about utility and doing your job. And that's something that I stress a lot, that a lot of people just don't do in this game. Uh, so watch what I do here. We're going to go over here. I don't want to fire at this guy. Well, I can't at the moment. I think we have a 17.6 kilometer range or 17.8. But we're about to be in range. There you go. 17.6. We're in range to shoot him. We don't shoot right away. But as soon as we're able to get behind the island with our, our conning tower, then we open fire because he can't spot us. Um, so we're going to start burning him, and first shot out at the gate, no fire. Six full penetrations, though. That's nasty. Uh, and again, that gigantic hotel on the front of the Fuso. Two, two salvos in. We haven't got a fire yet. It's crazy. We've already hit him 14 times and no fire, but there you go. Uh, we get a fire on the 20th shell, uh, basically. So, again... A lot of people think of fire chance, a 15% chance to set fire, isn't that impressive? Here I'm going to make a huge mistake, and it could have cost us big time. I go ahead and radar so that we can finish them off. I forgot, it's a 9 kilometer radar, not the 11 kilometer radar. So I have to immediately turn in, you can see me recognize it. I turn in, I know where he's at, I take the shot, and we're going to get this first kill right off the bat. Um, but yeah, almost screwed the pooch on that, that radar. Literally about screwed it up. But, uh, yeah. So, back to the fire chance. Fire chance is 15% per shell. Okay? It's not per salvo. It's 15% per shell. So, if you're firing 12 rounds downrange, and you hit 8 of them, you've essentially given yourself, you know, a 15% times 8 chance. That would be 120% chance? No. Would it? I, will, I don't know. 
Math is difficult. You guys got to realize it's nine. It's almost ten o'clock in the morning for me, so I I'm not all there up. Not that I'm always there anyway. You guys get it. But uh, Fuso is retreating. We already got rid of the Shirat. We're gonna push into the Charlie Caps. Start getting these base caps. The enemy already has the Bravo Cap. Uh, their destroyer moved in right away and did that. Our destroyer has kind of played around the outside. Um, again, he's spotted, so I don't hate him for it. And so we're going to just, now we recognize that the Fuso is no threat to us, we're going to push in and try to grab this base. Um, and again, I'm already watching to my right because I'm expecting the destroyer to actually come to me. Um, is that the right play for him to make? No, because I'm here. He's already seen that I was over here or seen people over here pushing in towards the cap. And you can see my team is actually doing a good job of following me in. They're not leaving me out to dry. They're not sitting in the back sniping from 20 kilometers. They recognize that everybody's running away and that they have a perfect opportunity to push. Now here, I should not have taken this shot. Uh, because I'm trying to capture the base, this goes back to the, the mantra that I said the other day where you don't always have to engage. Sometimes it's best to not engage. Why is that? Because if you get lit up and hit when you're seconds away from capturing the base, it resets your progress. Yeah. Luckily, there was other people in the base, and so we only got set back by like eight seconds. But watch again as one of them gets reset again and we hang on zero for a few seconds until the game catches up and we are able to get the base cap. Uh, just narrowly avoiding it. Now Fuso firing at that range, I'm not really scared of him anyway because let's be real, even at good range, Japanese battleships are troll. At long range, you might as well be th shooting a freaking duck on the shoreline somewhere. Like you'd have just as much luck of hitting that as you would me. Um, but we're going to push into the center cap now. Again, we're, we're a radar cruiser. We're about to get our radar back. Um, so I, I'm uh, I'm cognizant of that. You can see I do switch to AP here because Helena's giving it up. Helena's actually angled slightly, so she's giving me a very good opportunity to citadel her here. And unfortunately, I end up landing a little too far to the back. We get three over pins, two full pins, and she's going to turn away from us. And we are going to kind of do the same here. Now, obviously, she's got HE loaded. I do now have HE loaded. But uh, we're going to try to lob the island. He's got the plane up, so we're not going to be able to shoot it. Or we're not going to be able to stay unspotted. Uh, the plane's behind the mountain at the moment, so we do go undetected, which is nice. But uh, that's going to be short-lived because we have a destroyer over here on our side. And you can see it took me a second to figure out exactly where he was on the map because uh, it was just weird. It was just like one of those things that just caught me off guard. But he has no idea I exist until right about here. But it's too late. Half his health goes away in one salvo. Nine full pins on that man. He just got riggedy wrecked. <laughs> and then we follow it up with another one. And another one. And wait for it. Yeah, you're not escaping. You cannot afford to make those kinds of mistakes in a destroyer. Now that means we've killed two destroyers already in this match. And there's only three of them total. Now, obviously, we turn our attention back over to the Helena, uh, and we're going to go ahead and start trying to go undetected here. Now, obviously, I almost screwed up and turned back into these torpedoes from the, the guy that we just killed, but uh, we're okay. We're fine. Uh, that also gives us our first solo cap, so we got a, we got a assist cap for the first cap, and now we got a solo cap. And now I'm hesitant to come charging around this corner because I don't know where everybody's looking. I don't want to get myself into too much trouble. Uh, but you can see there's a Nuremberg that's just begging for it over here. So we're going to try to finish him off real quick with some HE she uh, shells. And uh, somehow he recognized it just in time to avoid them, but uh, turns in and gets blapped by the Caracciolo and he gets taken out. Uh, now that leaves two battleships over here. We still have the Helena and the Fuso on my left and uh, a battleship that turned around from the A cap and went back towards engaging my team. Now, this is the part where things go horribly wrong. We're about to move in behind two battleships. I know that that's a thing, and I'm detected before I come around the corner, which means the destroyer is here. And watch how long it takes me to recognize where this destroyer actually is. I spotted him. There he is. Okay, now, torpedoes are here. We take a turn away from the torpedoes to give us a little bit longer to get away. And oh my god, it went right under the back of our ship. We got so lucky. Uh, but 
we're gonna go ahead and try to get all the guns to play because obviously we want to take this guy out and uh, he started launching widespread torpedoes and unfortunately he's gonna catch us with one of these which is really really not fun and like I said there goes all my health we've played so well up to this point to conserve our hit points and in one stupid move managed to throw three quarters of our hit points away now we hit the buyer in there we get a fire uh, we're gonna go ahead and shoot another shot at him, try to get another fire on this man. And, uh, not quite getting a fire, but we get a nice hit into the superstructure. He does damage con it, and you can see I'm trying to turn away from that Helena because we know that he's shooting HE, he's gonna be able to do some serious damage to us with every shell that hits us, especially if he's running the OP, even though he doesn't need to. As you can see, every shell we take is nasty. Now, we do get a perma fire on the buyer in there, and, uh, we're gonna try to use the island as best we can but the byron gets a shell over the island hits us with two of them got fortunate not to get smashed even harder than that i think he overpinned us but uh yeah we're we're gonna disengage now we've got 3,000 hit points to our name and we want to capture this base again getting these bases capped is a win for the team like you cannot stress how important base caps are in domination mode because they allow your team to play a lot more defensive they don't have to be on the attack though our team has attacked pretty well this entire game and these guys are making the age-old decision of chasing kites you just don't do it i don't know why people do this um, now once i get this base capped i have uh, i'm st stuck between a rock and a hard place if you notice on the mini map the Helena is about to get within my detection range, which means it's going to be able to shoot me. I initially wanted to use this island as cover and come in behind these battleships, but with the Helena closing in finally, that's kind of throwing that out the window. There's not much I can do about that. So instead, I'm forced to engage the battleships directly and hope that they are going to focus the battleship out there instead of me. The battleship uh, that's at the front is the New Mexico and I was kind of worried or weird for a second I was like wait how is he not burnt more than that like we literally just set him on fire but we actually hadn't because we shot the Bayern not the New Mexico but uh, you can see I do take a shot at the New Mexico first shot we don't get it uh, second shot I believe we get a fire here and we are detected you can see that the New Mexico is is contemplating you know getting his guns around but the Byron's actually gonna take a shot at us as well as the uh, Helena behind us and you can see I'm trying to keep distance between me and that Helena because it's harder for him to hit me but he gets a good salvo there he gets three good penetrations with his HE we've got shells in the air from the Byron we're gonna try to get all of the guns off but we only get the front guns out are we gonna get the perma fire on the Byron no nope we're not but we end up having a solid game again three kills all three of which were all of their destroyers three destroyers entered three destroyers killed by my cruiser as well as getting two solo caps and an assist cap that is a huge game for the team that is a carry and a half now a lot of people think of when when they think of carrying games they're like oh my god you must have done 200,000 damage game in a tier 6 lobby or something like that but no it isn't always about damage folks sometimes you can carry the team without even doing any damage I've shown you guys games in the destroyer where I've put up you know 20,000 damage or less and gotten 3k base XP because I've done all the things that I'm supposed to do spot capture bases and, and so on and so forth so this game is, there's a lot of nuance. It's a very simple game in concept. There's a lot of nuance that a lot of people just don't get. And so that's why I try to have these videos where I showcase where it's not necessarily the damage that's going to show. Now this guy is making the dumbest play he could possibly make. He is betting 100% on the fact that this Helena is an absolute potato. Fortunately, this Helena is an absolute potato. <laughs> Watch him miss this shot. He already shot the island once. We've all done that. But then he completely whiffs on the second shot. And then when he finally does hit, it's too late. He's going to be able to dump both sets of his torpedoes. He, he shoots one initially. That forces the turn. And then he shoots the other one. And there's no way that this guy, guy can dodge both. And he actually ends up taking one from the first set, one from the second set. That's down he goes. That was completely unnecessary. And some of you who have a keen eye probably noticed that I actually jumped in a chat for just a brief moment. All I said in chat was, guys, 
You have the lead, you have the bases, you do not need to engage. All you have to do is survive. We win. That's all you gotta do. But uh, that was about the time that Dominsk is like, screw it, I'm going in! And I was like, oh boy. <laughs> I thought that that was gonna go much worse. But, uh, you know, maybe I'm an idiot. You know, but still. It was an unnecessary risk that, that he could have avoided uh, and could have went horribly wrong. And uh, fortunately, it did not. And because of that, we're going to end up winning the game much sooner. Because he ends up sinking the cruiser. Uh, now he's going out, he's shooting at the battleship. Our battleships are shooting at the battleship. We have just 20 points left before this game is over. So as soon as they end up sinking this Fuso, which is right there, uh, right as I switch over to, the, to looking at the kite, as soon as they, they uh, sink him, the game's over. So, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. And, uh, 68,000 damage game, first blood, three destroyer kills, three base caps, 3,000 base XP, or at least near enough. So let me know what you guys think, and if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.